Hello, everyone. I'm Linda Goodfriend. I am the chair of the acting department in Los Angeles, the New York Film Academy. And I'm very pleased to welcome today our guest, a wonderful actor and a graduate of the New York Film Academy one-year program, Manuel Garcia Rulfo. Um, I wanna tell you a little bit about Manuel. He is a Mexican actor. He has performed in major roles across American and Mexican television. His long list of very incredible credits includes director Michael Bay's Six Underground on Netflix. Uh, he is currently also in Netflix uh, international hit called Sweet Girl. He has played opposite Hollywood legend Tom Hanks in the film Greyhound and starred as one of the seven in Antoine Fuqua's remake of The Magnificent Seven with actors Denzel Washington, Chris Pratt, Ethan Hawke, Vincent D'Onofrio. In Fox's Murder on the Orient Express, he worked alongside Johnny Depp, Michelle Pfeiffer, Judi Dench, and Penelope Cruz. During his work on Sicario, he acted alongside Benicio Del Toro, Josh Brolin, Catherine Keener, and Matthew, Matthew Modine. He was also recently announced as the lead role of David E. Kelly's Netflix drama series, The Lincoln Lawyer, slated for release in 2022. So I would like to welcome Manuel and uh, say thank you for joining us today from Spain. Um, and Miguel, you can, uh, Manuel, you can turn on your camera, please. There you are. Can you hear me now? Hey. <laughs> You're off in Madrid. Um, you're currently there for an awards uh, ceremony. Is that right? Yeah. How are you, Linda? Um, yeah, they invited me. There's this uh, <clears throat> awards for I Ibero America Cinema, mm -hmm. and it's every year. And now, two years. I mean, before the pandemic, it was in Mexico. They were in Mexico, and this year, they they were they did it in Madrid, in Spain. And they invited me to uh, to present an award and you know to be here. So I'm happy to be in España. There you are, all over. Well, you are certainly something of a rare breed called an international movie star. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> but you are all over Netflix. Um, I've watched so much of your of your recent work. Um, you are on a new series. Oh, that's. Lighting is everything, isn't it? It's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you still look good. Okay. So you're everywhere. Your career, it seems like all of a sudden just blew up out of nowhere, but we all know there's no overnight success. Um, yeah. And we really, we have a lot of students, a lot of international actors watching today. Um, oh, I wish I could see the faces of everyone. <laughs> it's very right, you know. About this yeah. format. The good thing is you're there and we're here and we can still all talk. So um, right, right. But, um, I know you started your career in uh, Mexican films and then you uh, somehow took the leap into American films and television. Um, I've had so many students say that you're such an inspiration to them. Uh, because I do think it's not only hard to be an actor, hard to start, but hard to make that jump if you're an international actor. Um, so I wonder if you could just share with us what what inspired you originally to become an actor? Uh, you grew up in Guadalajara and uh, on a ranch, I believe. Um, what 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 made you want to do this crazy career? Oh, well, I don't. You know that little a lot of people they ask me this and. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. I I, I believe that. <clears throat> I mean, I, I I I grew up in a ranch, and my grandfather was like a cinema uh, aficionado, and he used to do like a lot of, you know, just funny movies or, uh, you know, with his sixteen millimeter camera, and he, we used to just shoot the films, and then we will project it at night, and. I don't know. I, I I was fascinated by by the machine, you know, because it was an old, you know, sixteen millimeter projector, and you know, and he used to um, we used to watch a lot of Chaplin films or Cantinflas or all this, uh, and I don't know. I was fascinated since I was, you know, uh, I don't know as long as I can remember, maybe six or seven years old, 
I was fascinated by the world. Um, and I started just watching all the films. It was, it's like a second, uh, actually it was my, like my school or like a second mother uh, cinema for me. Uh, so I, since I was a kid, I, I knew that I wanted to do, to belong into that world. At the beginning, I wanted to direct, I wanted to be a director, you know, to create a cinema and all this. <clears throat> um, but then I just, and then I, in high school, I start taking um, theater classes and I fell in love with it. And I just, I loved it. I, I loved how, we, you know, because so I was like, yeah, to tell the story, of course, you know, and all this, but what I, I do it because I love doing it. I, it just feels right for me when I, when I'm doing it, when I'm acting, uh, it just, it feels good, <laughs> even though sometimes it's, it's, it, you know, it's painful if the character requires or whatever. But uh, I, I love how I feel when I'm doing it. So, you know, I was doing theater and then I'm like, you know what, I'm going to, um, I, I, I didn't see myself doing anything else. And uh, so I start working as a <coughs> production assistant in Guadalajara making like uh, music videos and commercials and all this. I saved some money and then I went to uh, LA to the New York Film Academy to study acting. Um, but yeah, it, it just, uh, I, I don't know. I think from, since I was a little kid, I, I knew that I wanted to belong to that world. Like I said, I, at the beginning, I, I wanted to be a director, but I, or whatever, I wanted to belong into that, you know, into that magic, uh, yeah. That's a wonderful way to put it. What, you know, so you, after, after you studied here, uh, I think it was 2004 or five. Um, oh my goodness. I know. You went, um, you went back to Mexico. Is that right? And then yeah. you, um, you worked on films first. Um, I heard you got offered some soap operas for a lot of money and turned <laughs> Out because you didn't want to do soap opera, which was probably a good choice. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I after I finished uh, New York Film Academy, the, um, it was a one year uh, acting, you know, program. I went to Mexico. Or I, I moved to Mexico City <coughs> and started working, on, you know, auditioning and all this. And I started working in film. Yeah. And yeah, of course, like in Mexico in those times right now, you know, they're shooting a lot because uh, you know, the government is helping or whatever. But in those in those days, um, it was hard to make films. Uh, so there wasn't much, but I started working. I was lucky and to start working on film uh, and soap operas are the things, you know, they used to be the thing in Mexico. And I really it wasn't my thing, not because I respect people who do it and, and all this, but I, I was terrible for it. I, it it's it's it, it's really hard. To, it's like another kind of um, actors, you know. It's another kind of read. It's just for me, it's really really hard to say something that is not truthful. I guess, um, and, you know, soap operas are very melodramatic and all this. And for me to to make it, I, I was terrible for it. I, I remember because I auditioned for one. And that's the one they offer me. And I remember the audition. I'm like, I can't say these words. I, it's not natural for me. And <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, no, no, this is not my world. And I'm just going to stick to what I love, which is film and, and, and theater. And, you know, um, so yeah, I start working in, in Mexico city in a few films. And then, uh, and then one, one of the, those films went to, uh, I mean, I'm, Getting, getting ahead now, but uh, one of those films got to uh, a film festival in Denver, Colorado, which is a very small film festival, but it's very nice and it's really cool. They invited me uh, as the actor and the movie was, you know, nominated. I mean, you know, it was it's a, the selection of the festival. And they, <clears throat> they invited me to, the, to Denver. And in Denver, in the screening, when we screened the, the film, there was this actor watching the film, which is Richard Schiff. I don't know if it's familiar, but it's like a very big American actor. And he saw it in the, in the Q and A after the film. He's like, "Manuel, I loved what you did." And then he's like, uh, "We had we went to have dinner with him, and you know, 
And he's like, if you ever want to work in LA or in, 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 in the States, uh, I can introduce you to my, to my agent. And I'm like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And yeah, that's it. Next time I, I came back to Mexico and, and I, I make the trip to LA and met with his agents and he, they start sending me to an audition. Now that, that same day, they sent me to an audition, which I got a call back. So it was like a good sign for them. And since then I've been with that manager and that was, that was it. <laughs> what, what was your big break? What do you feel was your big break? Or do you feel it was just stepping stones at one after the other until you now are starring on your own series on Netflix? Um, that's that's a that's a long journey. But but was there one thing that happened or one film that re you really felt broke through for you in your career? No, I think definitely no. I, step by step, step by step, I think, but. <clears throat> Definitely the Magnificent Seven because you know it was a huge film and well, with all these huge names in it, um, it did open some some doors. But still, I had to fight for them. Like you know, I I mean there were some offers, but mm. sometimes I uh, you know I, they say the talent of an actor is in saying no to projects, which <laughs> I did say no to a lot of things that I wanted to do, but. Um, um, yeah, definitely. I think the Magnificent Seven. But again, I still had to fight, and still today, I still have to fight for, uh, you know, uh, the projects that I really, really want. I still have to audition, and you know. That was. I was going to ask you. You know, at at some point, have you felt? Do you feel that you have that power to turn down roles now, or um, be more selective in what you choose? Well, I've been in since the beginning of my career. I've, I've always been uh, very picky. Sometimes I'm wrong in the choices that I've taken. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not proud of some films that I've done or projects. But uh, maybe I'm not proud, but I don't regret it because I, you know, I had fun or <laughs> I worked with a person that I, an actor that I was a fan of and inspired me and I did it because I wanted to work with him, not just because of the project. But since the beginning, I've always been very picky on what I, you know, to say no and things that I don't want to. Not just not because of, uh, you know, it's because they're not. Sometimes they're not for me, and I know that, if, you know, if they're not for you, then you're gonna make a bad job. I think, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't, if you read the script and I don't connect with the character or with the story. I'm like, man, I, you know, it's just, why, why, why do it if I'm not right for it? You know, even if they're, even if they're offering to you, I'm like, no, I don't see myself doing that. <clears throat> so since the beginning, I, I've been, you know, saying no to things. And um, yeah, I mean, of course, right now they've been offering some stuff, but again, in the things sometimes in the things that I really want, and I still have to audition and, you know, self tape or meet with the director and all this. <laughs> so in some ways it doesn't get easier <laughs> no no never uh, they always ask me Manuel uh, you know what do you recommend to the students I'm like hey, just buckle up because it's going to be a very 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 bumpy road you know um, don't do it don't go into acting unless you really really love it and you don't you can't see yourself doing anything else because it's really tough. I, it really breaks you. Um, it still does, you know, even though you start seeing things more, you know, with less pressure, but, um, you know, you still have this project that you really want and you're waiting because you did the audition and now you're in the callback and the director really wants you and you're like, I wish I, you know, I won this, I won this. And then they end up giving it to some other actor still hurts <laughs> and I think uh, that's never going to end um, yeah. you know was there um, ever a time where you said I just can't do this anymore the rejection the hard work oh yeah 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 yeah. oh definitely I I, I retired myself for like a two years like a year and a half I'm like uh, okay fuck this thing I'm sorry for the language <laughs> it's just the lack of language uh, I'm like I'm not going to do this anymore I can't I can't take it and I went to the ranch and start ranching and just 
being in the ranch. And then, but again, there's something that I, I cannot seem even, you know, there's something that I need to do. I, I, I need to do it. There's like a little light in you that I need to be reading poetry and, and scripts and this and just saying it. There's something that I, even though I tried to escape from it, <laughs> I'm like, no, I, I need to do it. It was, a, it was a good time, you know, for a reflection or whatever. It was that year and a half that I'm like, I'm not going to do anything. But, um, but yeah, there, uh, yeah, and a lot of times I wanna, I'm like, I want to quit, of course. <laughs> but I, I'm sure every, every profession is like that. You know? But you're, you're still here, um, which is great for us. We really enjoy watching. <laughs> um, uh, so, so what makes you choose a certain role? What, um, I see a lot of your films, or it seems to be this running theme in, in some of your films where it's a, you know, good versus evil, uh, fight for justice, um, overcoming tyranny for the ones who can't, like, you know, the, the seven, yeah, yeah. magnificent seven, seven samurai <laughs> story. Yeah. Fight for the ones who can't. Um, that seems to be a theme in a lot of the work you choose. Is that something that's important to you? No, I never thought of it. I mean, I, it is important, you know, but I never thought of it. Yeah, of course it is important. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I choose the roles because honestly, like I said, I, I read the script and if something jumps, you know, and I really follow my intuition in that. I had a, a, a teacher in NIFA actually that always talked about the intuition and how important it is in the career of an artist, you know? Um, and I always follow that. I have the first read, even if it's a fast read, if it sparkles something, you know, is there something that I'm like, you know? I... <clears throat> and then of course it comes the intellectual part of it. like. Okay, is this a story I want to tell? Is this story doesn't go with my beliefs or my morals? Um, you know, but the, the base of it is me reading the script and saying, oof, this excites me. And I'm like reading the page and I'm already seeing, picturing the character and, you know, the films and all this. That's my base. And then, like I said, who's working on it? You know, um, who's, a, who's directing, of course, is very important for me. And, even the, the who's the cinematographer and all this, uh, you know, all that s starts to matter, you know. Mm -hmm. What has been your favorite role that you have I is gonna is gonna sound very uh, very corny, but all of them because <laughs> you know they all have um, they all have something that I I don't know how to explain, but the, they all leave me with something, you know, with a with a with you know with the teaching or uh, how do you say um yeah they all give me something at the end i take something from the character that, that i learn so i enjoy honestly like i said because i think i've been picky on the career mm -hmm. i've been lucky to have been to be working with people that inspire me and that i really like and and that i've learned so much so not just portraying the character, but the experience of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's every project's been really, really cool. But, you know, sometimes it's, uh, for example, I just did a <coughs> very small uh, drama in Mexico, a very small film that I'm producing, but it's a really, really, really independent, <laughs> no money uh, film. And I enjoyed it so much, um, but it's a drama. But then, of course, if you do the Magnificent Seven, you know it, it's. I love that character because you, you're you, you're like a kid again, you know, uh, riding horses and shooting guns like I used to play when I was a kid in the ranch. So uh, honestly, all of the characters, I've, I, there, there is something in me, and you leave something on them, uh, uh, so they've been important, and I, I love them. I have to say, I loved The Magnificent Seven. I saw, uh, yeah. people, I saw this, which was a different take on it. Um, yeah. And it just looked like you guys were having so much fun. Um, yeah. Seeing where you go into the saloon and you're, you know, both guns bl blasting and you come out with a big smile on your face and you're twirling your guns. Yeah. That was a great moment. That was just great. Um, yeah. 
blisters on your fingers from practicing. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. Fun. And and you know, even Denzel and everybody, every day we just looked at each other and like, aren't we lucky to be like, you know, allowed to spit on the floor and have a cigar <laughs> and having guns and set and you know, it, it was it was really fun. Did you did you uh, do any of your own stunts? I know you as a on your ranch you have horses and you probably ride a lot as a, rode a lot as a kid. Do you did you get to do stunts or did you, you know, get yeah, I, the stuntmen come in? <laughs> I do. I love I love doing it. I really love doing it. But I do as much as they let me because then the insurance things it becomes complicated. So they're like, no, 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 man, no, let the stunt do it. And honestly, they they look better than me doing it. So <laughs> it's better. Like, yeah, you're right. You should do it. <laughs> but I, you know, if I can do it, I'll do it. I, I love, uh, you know, all the action and all that. I, I just did this film that you mentioned, Sweet Girl, with Jason Momoa. A lot of stuff in that. Oh, man. But the, that guy is, you know, he beat the shit out of me, like, because he's huge he's like you know and i'm tall i'm not when six one and he's uh you know these hands are like so we were fighting and you know you have to make it real I mean, not punch you for real but you have to make it as real as possible so that was uh you know i'm like i think uh the stunt needs to come in because <laughs> i was beaten you you had to be tired after that film there, there was so much action it was great um, yeah playing now sweet girl it's great um it's a yeah. very interesting film um i'm not yeah it away. <laughs> yeah um so so what do you normally do to prepare for a role uh different ways to do it um a lot of your roles have been very physical but um uh the role in that there was also another very uh uh interesting con uh internal character going on with that guy um what do you do yeah. do you use techniques do you um use your instinct um how much off of the script can you work right you know what i honestly i have it depends on the character that i'm doing and i again everything is for intuition but it depends on the on the character i'm doing is the method that i method i guess i created my own method <laughs> i don't even know but it's a method that I use, for example, <clears throat> the first time I, I, I read the script for the, the murder on the Orient Express, mm -hmm. I read the character and I was, every time I read him, I was picturing as I reading, you know, you imagine the characters. I don't know if you remember this character. It's very silly what I'm going to say, but there's a character from um, the Little Mermaid and it was a crab. It was like Cuban. I don't know if you were yeah. like under the sea, <laughs> under the sea. And I don't know why every time my character spoke, I, I saw this guy. So that was my instinct and I went for it. And it was very Latin, you know, pop, 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 you know. Um, but I, this is, a, that's the first time that I do it, that I do that, you know, that I am um, uh, inspired by a cartoon character and, you know, make it little your own. And some other times I do it just, uh, yeah, by, you know, uh, reading the script and the first uh, thought that I get, that's, when, you know, I start exploring that. Sometimes it's by books, sometimes it's by paintings. Uh, you know, art for me gives me a lot of, uh, you know, um, speaks to me a lot. So if there's a painting, famous painting, uh, sometimes i take that but again it's it's always different for example um in sicario which was a, a, it was kind of hard because it's a it's a very personal uh, especially for us mexicans uh you know it's a it's a sensitive matter mm -hmm. um so it was hard to do it you know because i don't know if you saw it or not there's a scene where i shoot a kid and it's really it's a hard film and it was very personal um but for that it was all instinct like i went uh i have a coach and in la and we worked on it and it, it was it was uh, we worked on animals so you know i based i best 
based, sorry for my English, that character, um, uh, you know, it was a wolf. So it depends. Honestly, it depends on the character, whatever. I read it and I'm like, okay, this I'm going to approach like this, this I'm going to approach like that. It depends. But uh, what I do need to do is to, uh, you know, well, not really, but maybe that's just an insecurity, but I do need to learn the lines. You know, learn lines, learn lines, learn lines, so I can do whatever I want you with know, it. Is it still hard to memorize after all your work? Uh, I think there's a muscle in the brain, you know, that it's been getting better at it, especially now that for the first time I did TV or as a lead and carrying the show. And it's all in English and in legal terms, which I don't even know what they mean in Spanish. And I can't even pronounce them in Spanish. And now I had to do it in English. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. And man, it was monologues and monologues of, of dialogue that I had to learn for the next day. <laughs> and um, so I, I guess I'm getting better at it. But still, like, I really need, even if it's like two lines, I need to really, so I can do whatever with it, I, you know? Unless it's improvising, that's different. Then, then I, then I'm, I feel comfortable. But uh, if if the director is very strict with with the with what's written on the page, uh, I I really need to learn the lines. Even though I do the internal work first, mm -hmm. and then I learn the lines, of course. But yeah, to learn my lines is really important for me. Um, did you watch the film? Did you read the books for that first? Or did you just take the script and create the character? No, no, I did. I, I love that there's uh, novels. I, I, I love it because it, it gives you the DNA of, of the, you know, the story. So I did read the first book and I read the, the second book, the second book, which is where, where this uh, the TV series starts. The first book, Matthew McConaughey did it. Um, I saw it, the film when it came out, which was a long time ago. I didn't want to see it again. Um, but I did read the, the book and it, it gave me a lot of, um, a lot of uh, insight for me. But then, you know, that sometimes is a problem because then the producers, they have another idea. And they're like, no, no, but the DNA and the structure of the character exists. Like, yeah, yeah, but we're trying to do something different. You know, sometimes it's not good, but, I, you know, it's good to uh, to have that, and then you can let it go if it doesn't work. You know, if they want to create something different. <clears throat> but I did read it, and I did most of everything was from from the book that I took. Little details, little stuff that tells you a lot about the what the character is. You know, mm -hmm. because I think they they did cast it, they recast it with you as the lead, and focusing on the the character's um, uh, Latin background, I think, um, yeah. be, which would be great. Because I don't think, yeah. really, but the book, the book does include that. Yeah, the book gives you, it's supposed to, his, his mother is Mexican. Her mother, is it his mother? Her mother. His mother, yeah. His mother is, is Mexican. She's a Mexican actress mm -hmm. from a soap opera. <laughs> and, and his father is American. So that's why they wanted yeah. um, you know, like a Mexican American or a Mexican actor. Well, let me ask you, what what is your dream project? Um, whether they're going to remake another film, a role that you've seen you would like to do, or um, you've done now um, several very iconic American genres. You've done a Western, you've done a war movie, yeah. Tom Hanks, you've done, you know, a, you've done crime thrillers. Um, do you have any desire to do a rom-com or a superhero franchise or <laughs> what, what is your dream project? I, I mean, I, I really, uh, and I think that's where I feel more comfortable is with drama. Mm -hmm. I love small movies that uh, they're uh, character driven, you know, and uh, very realistic, uh, you know, there's a couple of examples in the States, really good films that I like. <coughs> Those are the films that I enjoy doing, but the, the, everything, like for example, I, I love the movie, uh, the cinema of uh, the films of uh, Wes Anderson. I love that tone I love, or this, this guy, um, you know, the Georgia Rabbit, uh, what's his name, Ducky, what's his name? 
Taiki Waikiki. I don't want to say it wrong. Anyway, um, you know, there's, the, yeah, I, I would love to do everything. Honestly, there's not something good. I, I, for example, um, I remember doing Six Underground and Brian Reynolds was like, my God, you're so funny. I'm like, bro, you were the first time that I ever says this to me. I'm not funny at all. It's like, no, 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 you're the funny. I'm like, bro, I'm not funny. And you have to do comedy. You have, to, And he really pushed me to that. I'm like, maybe I'm just afraid of doing comedy. And maybe there's some, that's something I, that I would like to explore. You know, maybe like a run comedy would be really fun to do. Of course, to be a superhero as well, you know, get all frail with the muscles everywhere. That would be fun too. Um, but what, what, I'm, what I'm, I'm more interested in are real, you know, real characters and um, that, yeah, that the public and or the viewers can, you know, have a catharsis with and have a, you know, a reflection with that. And um, yeah, those are the, but again, I would love to do everything, everything. Even a cartoon, I can't wait to do like a voice, you know, a cartoon. I would, I would love to do it. Wonderful, because you love <laughs> it so much. Um, do you talked about directing before? Do you think you would like to direct? Is that something you are pursuing someplace behind the the screen? No, or? yeah, yeah. I did. A, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a short film that I've been working for years, and again, I think I'm afraid of doing it because I, I really respect it. And you know the things that you really like, you're kind of afraid of fucking it up because then you're like, shit, I suck at what I love. <laughs> um, but yeah, at some point I won because uh, I love photography as well. It's one of my hobby, hobbies and passions and all this. So at some point I'm, I'm doing it. Um, I did my first thing directing. It was a piece of the short film I'm, I'm writing. And I just did like a camera testing. And I loved doing it. I felt so alive and it was hard because I was acting in it, which I'm not going to do. If I direct one day, I'm not going to be <laughs> acting in it. I'm just going to be directing. But I respect it so much that I really need to be like, I've been reading every book. I took a knife, uh, what was it, like two, three years ago, I took a knife uh, directing. You know, I was in LA, I wasn't working. Good places. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah i finish a film and like i call the knife i like guys i, I want to take a <laughs> directing course. it was like a you know six weeks or something like that and it, it, i love to do it i love i loved it and honestly as an actor is it, it opened my eyes as an as an actor as well i think every actor should learn how you know because then you you know actors sometimes we're very um you know worried about stuff that it doesn't really matter in the camera you know and i learned so much from it but uh, still i think i need to learn more and maybe just one day jump and start doing it but i i love it i i really think i'm going to do it at some point it sounds like a good plan um yeah and you know it, it, i i think for most actors at some point you want to do the next layer um, you want to be involved in the next layer of the story. And I yeah. think that's a kind of a natural way to go. Um, I, yeah. I uh, have so many questions I could ask you, but I have about 75 questions in the, uh, in the Q and A line. <laughs> so oh, I, nice. I could start asking you some of these and see what we could get through. Um, uh, this is from Axel Rodriguez. What is the business opportunity for Latinos in the Hollywood industry? As an actor? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's, uh, it's getting better and better. Uh, I think we still have a long road. But um, I definitely think, I mean, now you have Diego Luna, you know, um, starting in a Star Wars film and one of the biggest franchises of cinema. <laughs> And he's the lead, and now he's doing the lead in the Star Wars show, the same the TV show of the same film. Um, you know, Gael Garcia being nominated. I don't know if he won or if he was he was nominated. I don't know if he won, but he was nominated or won for the Golden Globe for Mother in the Jungle. You know, Damian Bichir was also. Uh, I think little by little, um, the door, you know, 
uh, Hollywood starts to realize that, you know, viewers or Latinos want to be represented in the film. So I think, um, yeah, I, th I think it's a good moment, not just for Latinos, but for, you know, for everyone. It's a, it's a good moment. I think that's a, uh, the good part that I take from all this happening of, of inclusion and all this is well, everything is good about it, but is that everybody's is, is getting open to see, you know, it doesn't matter the race or the language, you know, there's a, now there's TVs a series from Germany or from Mexico that it's globally and everybody's watching it and they love it. So I think uh, it's good. I think it's a good moment for everyone to, uh, you know, to dive into this. Okay. Um, uh, what, how long would it take you to leave your mother tongue and get fluent in English in Hollywood? Uh, no, I still am not fluent at all. Um, well, I, 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 I was lucky to uh, did an uh, exchange student. You mm -hmm. know, when I was, uh, I was, I was a kid, I was like 12 years old and I, I went to live with an American family in Vermont, Newport, Vermont which I loved. And so I was lucky to speak the language, but then uh, it took me, a, I don't know. I, and I've always in Mexico, I, especially, yeah, especially in Mexico, in Mexico, you have all the films that you watch are in English. So you grew up just, you know, listening to English, listening to English. And I remember me learning all the dialogues from all the movies that I watched as a kid, even, even if I didn't know what I was saying. But I remember, you know, learning the dialogue, just repeating dialogues of the actors. So I guess I grew up with it, I guess. But still, it's really, really bad. I mean, now that I did The Lincoln Lawyer, I have a, now it's gone, but I have a accent coach. And the accent is not perfect, but it's like, you know, it's very neutral. I, I'm very proud of that. Um, but still, I have a, a long way to go to, you know, even though I think it's, uh, it gives me a little, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, hello, I'm Cecilia Leon. I'm 16 and I'm so happy uh, to listen to Mexican talent. What did you learn at the academy that helped you the most in your professional life? Greetings from Hidalgo, Mexico. Oh, wow. Um, saludo. Um, one of the, the words here, I'm going to say it in English, yeah? Uh, <laughs> say I think it what, <laughs> I, what I really liked was, because I studied NIFA and I studied at some other great schools as well. And what NIFA really offers and that I really appreciate is the, the hands-on, you know, the technical, because they really, at the start, they, they put you in front of a camera. And you start to know what the light is and what the camera angles are and lenses. And, you know, so I think I remember starting my, when I, once I finished NIFA, you know, the first film I did in Mexico, all, most of the actors were new. They were like, man, they never taught me that in my school. And they, it was a great school, an acting school, but they never taught them the camera side, you know, the cinema side, which is like a different um approach into how you act or how you portray your character because it's very technical and i think knife of that may it's, it's amazing about you know because it really yeah it shows you what really is on you know on set it's not just being free and being the character and all this and there's a lot of technical things that you cannot do or you have to do you have to watch uh you know, sometimes you can't be reading with another actor. You know, sometimes you have to read up to a mark or whatever it is. And NIFA gives you that. So once you get out, once I got out of NIFA and start working on short films, I knew, you know, what everything was. And everybody's like, oh. So yeah, that's, I take that. That's the best thing I learned in, in, in New York. Yeah. That's great. Um, what would, Isabella Velasco, what would you say was the experience that made you think Okay, it was all worth it. Uh, what the, what was the, the acting? What was the experience that made you said, okay, it was all worth it? I I guess that the worth it was um, all the pain and suffering and oh. being an actor. <laughs> <laughs> all of that stuff was worth it, or is well, it? Worth I, it? <laughs> 
No, I think uh, I think uh, inviting my mother and my parents and my you know to the red carpet of my first film uh, that was it was a huge thing because it, we we opened a, a film festival a very big film festival in Mexico and it was huge you know so it was like for them it was like well, and to see their faces and their you know that that was the that was the moment that was great. yeah. And then they realized that you weren't delivering pizzas anymore, probably. So, <laughs> oh yeah, they didn't want me to do an, uh, you know, to be an actor. I'm like, what do you mean? What are you talking? About? My grandfather used to do it. You know, what did you expect? Yeah. Uh, let's see. What What has been the hardest role you prepared for? The hardest role. Hardest one. Poor. Uh, I think this one definitely not definitely the this Lincoln the Lincoln lawyer uh, not just for the not for the character but for the work it requires I mean the tough hours every day you're shooting you know um, long dialogues that was yeah it's definitely has been the hardest project not the hardest character because I really I really connect connect with a character and it was really easy for me right away. It was, you know, it was like there was something in me that, you know, um, that I understood right away. But as, as, as a work, that was the hardest project. Again, because of the time and, you know, you have to go day by day and learn, you know, come home at nine o'clock at night and, and try to learn for the next day, 11, 14 pages of dialogue. Uh, on a language that's not yours, on terms that you don't even, like I said, no, I don't even know what they mean in Spanish. So yeah, definitely the hardest, but um, yeah, I have a project right now that I have to be, but I think that's gonna be the, the most challenging uh, for my career so far. And it has, I mean, I can't say anything right now, but it, it has to be very physical and, I have to change really physical and it's it's going to be hard, but I'm excited about it. Uh, who was your favorite actor to work with? We won't show them the recording. Anybody else? Again? Yeah. We won't do that. Oh man, so many, but... um. Work with great actors. Just great actors. Yeah. You know, I, I think, because I was a, always been a fan of, uh, I can't choose one, but I mean, right now, the one that jumps right away is Benicio del Toro, mm. because I've always been a fan of the guy. And to do what he does, to see what he does, and the passion and the commitment that he has for he, when he does, it's just, I, it's, it's insane. It's just insane, the amount. Also, Denzel Washington, Julie Bench, I don't know, Gary Oldman. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many, but I right now, if you say I have to pick one, uh, I would say Benicio del Toro. Good, good choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, Mary Bailey, which director would you like to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Oh, there's so many. Um, so many, so, so many. But uh, I mean, I love, I love cinema, but uh, if they have to be American, I would say. Wes Anderson, Tarantino, Terrence Malick, Scorsese. Um, uh, oh, I can't even, I mean, you have the Mexicans too, Iñárritu, Cuaron, and um, Lars Montier, I love, um, Custurica, Sorrentino. Ah, the, the list is really, 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 really long. Um, you've but, worked um, a lot of yeah. movies with um, Manolo, Caro, is that right? The yeah. director. What what um, do you why do you love working with him? What what about working with him? It's it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm staying right now at his house and he's <laughs> right there. <laughs> you better say nice things. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um I love work. I love what he does, and he's very he has, uh, I love working with him and, uh, you know, because he has a, he's dirty, not dirty. And, you know, his mind is dirty. He's like, he's like a little villain and he creates magic 
characters, like very large. He's like, he's like the cinema of Almodovar, but in Mexican, you, like, I love directors that have, a, you know, that have a signature. Like, I know that when I see a film, I know it's Manolo Scaro. I know that I, if I see a film, it's Tarantino. I know if this I see it, it's Wes Anderson. And Manolo Caro has that. He has a style that is very unique and is very rich with very a lot of colors. Like, he's like a, yeah, like Mexico. He has like folklore everywhere and colors everywhere. And the characters are huge and they're funny and it's very um, surreal. You know, <laughs> I love that. Plus, he's a, he's a good, good, good friend of mine. So. That's great. Um, let's see, a couple of last questions. What is something you would tell your younger self as advice? What advice would you give your younger self? Oof, uh, man, you should have been a dentist like your father. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, um, I don't know. What, what would I, maybe not to worry so much because, um, yeah, maybe to, you know, you mean when I'm, I was starting acting, right? I guess, yeah, not to worry so much and just enjoy more because at the beginning you were very tense and you need to work and work and work and, you know, if it's not this project, then I'm not going to, you know, and sometimes, and also when you get the project or the film or whatever, you want to do such a great job that you overwork yourself and and then in art, you know, it's about the enjoyment and that's where the good stuff comes. So at the beginning, I was very tense because, and I can see it, I can see with the early things that I've done that I'm like, I wasn't really enjoying, even though I was enjoying it, but I wasn't really free because I wanted to do a really good job. So I would say to myself to enjoy more and be more relaxed about things, everything's going to work out, you know? Okay um what is your last bit of advice to young actors especially um actors international actors who want to break into the united states market um what is your advice Oof, my advice is uh well for uh, it depends what you want to do but if uh, in the case of acting i uh, i would suggest to uh, study <laughs> to study the acting, uh, to study the grades, to watch a lot of films, to watch, uh, read all the plays and watch all the plays you can read and watch. Uh, watch everything, doesn't matter if it's uh, silly or very artsy, watch everything and be open to everything. Uh, but especially learn the great ones in literature and in cinema and art. I think um, as uh, artist, any kind of art, you when you're not working, I think your job is to be always be inspired because sometimes, you know, it's, it starts to fade away sometimes. So art makes you makes to have your feelings flow. You know, to feel feelings like right here when you watch, you go to a concert or you watch a piece of, of art or an exhibit or a film. So always to be reading stuff and uh, interesting in everything and, and yeah have experiences that's great advice um <laughs> well um i know we didn't get to all the questions but there are many many uh uh send uh, pieces in this chat which they say congratulations 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 <laughs> congratulations uh, uh, they are and very grateful that you uh, agreed to come on today to talk to all of us. So much. no, thank you, thank you, everyone. I, I wish I could see your faces. Thank you, thank you for the time. I feel flattered that you're <laughs> that you're there connected. In person, sometime when we can all be in the same city, you'll visit us. In person. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Anytime you guys invite me, I'll be there. So, and I live in LA, so. Appreciate it very, very much. And I wish you well, safe travels. And uh, we thank you, Linda. Lincoln lawyer and making sure that all of those legal terms are right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Linda. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Goodbye.